If you thought DJI was just gonna stop at dominating the flying camera market, well, you were wrong, as now we're looking at a future where DJI also dominates your precious rugs. My name's Ian, and today I'm here to tell you about drone news, just like last week and probably next week, as long as you behave. DJI is now stepping into the home robotics game with a circular butler that's sole life purpose is to pick up Cheerios and Lego pieces as last week, Jasper Ellens on X shared some photos of what appears to be a new smart vacuum cleaner with a DJI logo on it. The design looks typical, so it'll be interesting to see what DJI does to differentiate against what's already a pretty cluttered market of robo vacuum cleaners. They're calling it the DJI Romo, and if the leaked screenshots are anything to go by, it looks like it'll have a detailed room by room map so you can see exactly where it's cleaning. If you ever wondered where your vacuum is, it's probably tumbling down the stairs right now. We're not sure if this circular floor Hoover will be available in North America just yet, but being one of the largest tech companies in the world means I'm sure we'll soon be talking about flying vacuums taking over our skies and how we're gonna ban them. Just yesterday, DJI put out a teaser for a new Enterprise drone that looks a lot like the successor of the potential Matrice 350 flying workhorse, or flying pickup truck as I like to call it. The launch event is scheduled to take place next week on Tuesday, June 10th at 8 a.m. Eastern or 5 a.m. Pacific, and most likely will be the Matrice 400A that we've been seeing some leaks trickle out over the last little bit. Quadro News recently shared a video and a few photos of what this drone is likely to be, and it looks similar in nature to the Matrice 350 RTK, but most interestingly, it's got a dorsal mounted battery bay and a big black dome on the top, which kind of looks like a Livox LiDAR emitter for either real-time mapping or obstacle avoidance in totally dark environments. So could this drone be targeted at the flyability Elios, which also has the ability to fly in complete darkness without GPS using onboard LiDAR ray? But we don't have concrete specs yet. Quadro News did say that the drone will feature a 20,254 milliamp hour battery, all four transmission systems, and of course, some sort of enhanced optical detection, probably LiDAR. But wait, there's more. Quadro News also got their hands on a bunch of new photos of some other upcoming products. So we're just gonna kind of fire them off rapid here. We've got new close-up images of the DJI Osmo 360, which we've been talking about for almost a year now, it feels like. And if we take a closer look though, we can see that the camera will use the same kind of mounting system that's featured on DJI's other flagship action camera, so that maglock system. We've also got some other leaked photos of a DJI Action 6, which looks to be pretty similar design to its predecessor, with one key difference. If we take a closer look at it, we can guess that it features some sort of additional sensor or screen right below the main screen in the front of the camera. Who knows, maybe they're adding LiDAR to this camera as well. Like, is DJI having an Oprah moment right now and putting LiDAR on everything? Life is better with lasers. So, in some other news from us, we got our hands on a Mavic 4 Pro, and we're working on a bunch of new videos for you that you'll be able to see as we get them done as soon as possible. We're putting this drone through its paces, testing all the new features and diving deep into how this drone performs in the real world setting and how it differentiates from its predecessors, like the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Pro, on and on. So like I said in our launch video, it's easy to fall into the launch hype when you see sponsored influencers getting shots in incredible locations around the world, but when that travels over, how does the drone actually perform? So we've noticed some things about this drone that no one has really talked about yet, and we're super excited to show you what we've got coming. So like I said, get subscribed if you aren't already and be the first to know when our Mavic 4 Pro specific review slash tech deep dive content drops. And in the meantime, if you haven't already seen it, I did do a bit of a deep dive on why the Mavic 4 Pro exists, period, and why I think it's still kind of a rough value proposition and the summary of my initial launch day thoughts on it. So go check that out. Well, today's episode is, of course, brought to you by us at Coastal Drone Co., your trusted resource in drone training certification in Canada, the USA, and from around the world. Are you thinking about getting a new drone? Well, you'll definitely want to get a drone pilot license or certificate to go along with it. And trust us, the last thing you want to do is be in the middle of a shot and find out that you're in trouble with the law. We've trained about 20,000 drone pilots, helping them get their basic, their advanced, their part 107, and soon their level one complex pilot certificate here in Canada. We offer online or in-person training so you can feel confident throughout your journey as getting ready to be a drone pilot for either fun or for work. 
wherever and however you're flying, our courses are easy to follow and will guide you through everything that you need to know. So check out the links below or visit us at coastaldrone.co to take your flying with drones to the next level. Oh, and if you're in North Bay, Ontario tonight and looking for something to do, a drone light show is set to take place at Kiwanis Banshaw Park tonight at 10 p.m. So after this video, not before, but after it's done, get out there and go watch it. In celebration of the city's 100th anniversary, they're hosting a big event this evening and there will be live music and of course the drone show and probably some other fun activities. Take a look for like corn dogs and cotton candy, I'm sure. There's gotta be, if there's not, that it's not a real event. The show will be visible from a kilometer away, that's a thousand meters or 3000 feet. And for the best experience, the city suggests viewing it from the grassy area in front of the band show. And there will also be audio, which will be synchronized to the drone light show. So you'll have sights and sounds. If you want to know more about what goes into planning a drone show, we actually did a podcast last year with Pixel Sky Animations just before they did their 1000 drone show for the Grey Cup in Vancouver. So Squamish Search and Rescue are reminding unscrupulous drone pilots to beat it after a helicopter couldn't land during a rescue mission due to a drone being in the air nearby. Over the weekend, rescue volunteers were dispatched to the first peak in the Stuamis Chief Provincial Park to assist an injured hiker. And if you've ever been up there, you'd know that it's a pretty steep grind. And due to the steep and challenging terrain, several team members had to be flown in through helicopter to help the hiker who was then extracted using a long line external person on a string rescue. In the middle of the operation, a drone was spotted flying too close to both the helicopter and the rescue team, forcing the operation to be halted. Luckily, someone on the ground did manage to get the drone operator's attention and it left the area. So as a reminder, operating a drone in a provincial, national, or a lot of regional parks without permission is illegal in every way, full stop, no ifs, ands, or buts. The damage that incidents like these cause can be catastrophic and put so many lives at risk. And if that's not enough, you could even face a fine of up to $25,000 and up to 18 months in jail. And aside from the monetary fines, incidents like these will lead to further regulations and restrictions will just make all of our lives harder and when it comes to enjoying flying drones, period. So in other local news, the city of Choak has confirmed the Canada Day drone show is coming back for another Canada Day drone light show on Canada Day. Where's Choak, you ask? Well, if you follow your nose to the east end of the Fraser Valley, it's the land of corn and cow farts. That's a smell of money if you're a farmer. Last year marked the first time that this was done in Choak, replacing the traditional fireworks display. And around 7,000 people gathered at Exhibition Field, including yours truly, to watch approximately 180 drones create stunning images in the night sky. Throughout the day, of course, there's gonna be community activities such as music, hot dogs, food trucks, you name it, it's all gonna be there. It's a fun event, so head down and enjoy yourself. You might even see me there lurking around, probably again near the drones or something like that. We're seeing more and more festivals switch to drone shows as they're not only a more eco-friendly alternative to fireworks, but they're often a more quieter experience for both kids and pets. And finally for this week, Greece is stepping up its efforts to tackle wildfires this summer by deploying a record number of firefighters and nearly doubling its drone fleet. To prepare what officials are going to say is a tough fire season, Greece is mobilizing 18,000 professional and seasonal firefighters supported by thousands of volunteers in efforts to stop the fires. A key part of Greece's updated wildfire response includes updating and expanding its use of drones, with the number of surveillance aircraft jumping from 45 to 82 in just two years. These drones are now a vital tool in monitoring high-risk areas and providing real-time footage to help guide firefighting strategies from the ground. Chief Theodorus Vagius emphasized that the country must improve how it monitors and responds to fires, stressing that the climate crisis demands more efficient use of resources and better preparedness. During a recent drill, emergency teams practiced using those drones to provide footage streamed to tablets, coordinating water drops from aircraft, and even simulating the evacuation of a children's camp threatened by potential wildfires. So that's it for this week. Stay tuned for a video this Sunday where we're going into the eight things that you need to know to level up your drone skills. And in the meantime, check out last week's episode where we dive into all the common mistakes drone pilots make and of course, how you can avoid them. As always, hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Bye.